Hello Akuma fans, this is Charlie with the Gossiker Application Staff once again to show you another tip and trick for the Akuma lathe. Today we're going to talk about the soft job boring process. I've seen a whole bunch of really cool macros and inside programs and just some fancy stuff that people are using to cut soft jaws on their lathes. However, most people are ignoring the fact that Akuma has provided you a very handy soft jaw process right on your control. Today we're using the P300L control. This is for a twin spindle single turret machine, but the process is going to be similar for every Akuma turning center from P300 on. So what I'm going to do, we're going to start by uh, clicking over to our spindle one setup because that's the jaw we're going to cut. And we do have the same process for spindle two if you have a twin spindle machine, but let's just do it for spindle number one just so that we can see what's going on. From our main operating screen, if I touch the spindle one setup tab, we all should be pretty familiar with this by now. We've got these, uh, this is where our zero position is. This is where we've defined our graphic. If you're not sure how to do that, there's a, another video that I've done on my channel that uh, shows how to do this. There's also a jaw description up here, which generally isn't used unless you're using collision avoidance software and you want to make sure you're not knocking into some jaws. However, uh, when we do the soft jaw process from Akuma, it will automatically populate this information for us whether we're using it or not. How slick is that? So from this page down here, uh, right above the F4 key, you'll see a button called soft jaw process. If I tap that, it changes the value of our screen to populate the information for making a soft jaw. Now, many people that I've talked to have tried this. They've called up this screen just from experimentation with no training whatsoever, and they go through and they populate everything, but doggone it, the thing comes up with an error and they just give up out of frustration because they believe they've populated all the information correctly yet the software is still telling us that there's an error so spoiler alert here's how you fix it from the factory the machine has some parameters that have not been set up yet we're gonna do that first down here above F6 you notice you've got a button called parameter setting and if I pop that open here's our problem from the factory, it comes out with a tool position X and Z of zero, which, oops, that's a crash waiting to happen, and also the maximum spindle speed is set to zero. So we need to populate this based on our shop's preferences. Uh, tool position movement, generally I leave it G0, but our tool position, this is for tool change, I'm going to set that to 30 inches in X and because I don't need to go all the way home in Z I'm simply going to make that 7 inches just long enough to accommodate the longest boring bar that I would use for this particular uh, soft jaw process. Now our maximum spindle speed I'm going to advise that you remember where this parameter is because obviously the maximum spindle speed will be different depending on the material of your soft jaws. Aluminum, hey, all right, let's spin it a lot faster. But steel, okay, we want to clamp it. Also, if I'm using three inch jaws instead of inch and a half jaws, now I've got centrifugal force to take into account. So remember where this is. You don't want to just set it and forget it. However, I've found that, okay, two thousand is generally good for my particular setup in this in this shop and um, I'll leave it there until such time as I need to slow that down for pie jaws or uh, maybe I've done something funky with some uh, some clamping and fixturing the rest of these spindle gear spindle gear finish and a chamfer size we can uh, we can modify those as we wish there's a few more down here in the uh, in the lower but the factory default is pretty safe we'll talk about what each one of these is doing when we go to populate the rest of our our soft shop process so 
Once you get those populated properly, now you're going to do away with the alarm that may or may not have been frustrating you up to this point. Now F8 close, we'll shut that down. The machine is going to remember those defaults even once we power off. So that's why I tell you that if you do decide you need to change that G50 or the maximum spindle speed, just pop back over to your, your uh, uh, soft chop process parameters and modify the spindle speed max from right there. Now we're ready to populate the information about our jaws. We've got this wonderful little graphic over here that's going to show us exactly what they're asking us. And the graphic will change depending on what's highlighted on this side. I'm going to skip all the way to the last, uh, the last entry, the jaw shape, so that I can show you that, yeah, okay, this is an OD gripping jaw. That pretty much looks like what we're looking at. Now, if I were to um, change that to an ID grip. Now it changes our graphics so that we can see exactly what it is that we're uh, that we're trying to do. In our case, let's do an OD jaw. First question in the upper left hand corner is are we going to rough and are we going to finish? By just touching or selecting the check mark you can um, uh, select whether or not to do both operations or just one. This is very handy because if you do a rough and a finish initially then you find you need to adjust your diameter ever so slightly you can just deselect the rough and run in the finish tool. It's really cool. But since we're starting from scratch we're gonna do a rough and a finish. First question is what tool number would you like? And I'm gonna say we're gonna use tool number five and offset number five as well rotational direction that's asking us whether we're doing clockwise or counterclockwise depending on whether or not our boring bar is upside down or right side up I'm gonna stay with clockwise velocity is the V in surface footage per minute so let's just do 450 we'll call this a mild steel jaw feed rate during roughing and a cut depth well that's a little weak come on Charlie this is an Akuma we can cut now we populated the information behind our roughing tool and we can do the same for our finish tool. In our case, yeah, we'll leave the same tool, we'll save them the same direction, but let's do 475 surface footage for finish and 8 thousandths for a uh, finish feed rate. Notice the cut depth does not exist for finish because, well, this is only going to take one shot. That's obviously a finishing move. The first question for dimensions is our soft jaw blank, the L1 dimension. There it is right there, and you notice that it has changed color because that's what's highlighted. It's uh, Akuma's way of helping us figure out what they're asking. The highlighted information will always be in the darker color, and you notice that it changes depending on where my, my cursor is selected. So our L1 is the overall height of the jaw. Let's just say we're doing a one and a half inch and the D1 is now the overall length of the jaw. You can take these directly off of the jaws that are in the machine, just grab a scale. They don't have to be exact. These are simply to assist the software in uh, building our graphic for the jaw once we're done. There are some things that are critical like the ring diameter. This is where your boring bar is going to start cutting. So some people are clamped on a, uh, a ring like you see in the graphic. Some people are clamped on one of those fancy little jaw, uh, jaw jigs. I have discovered that uh, with hydraulic jaws you really don't have to be clamped on anything. Uh, you can simply invert the IDOD clamping switch and bore your jaws. It's worked fine for me for years. but. Uh, in this case, we know that the ring diameter is where the, the boring cycle is going to start. So let's just say that our ring diameter we're clamping on is 1.5. Jaw width thickness, here you go, right there, is showing you how wide the jaw is. This does not have any direct bearing on the boring cycle at all, but if this were populating collision avoidance for us, that thickness is important because perhaps we'll have a live tool that's trying to come in from the side and it wants to know when to warn us that a collision is imminent between your jaw and this tool. 
you cannot leave that at zero. The software just says no. So even if you're not using the uh, collision avoidance system, you do still have to populate that. Jaw number, how many jaws have you got? In general, it's going to be three. Chucking diameter, that is the actual working dimension of the pocket that we're going to make. So let's say that this is going to be for a 3.5 inch uh, cut. And L2 is the depth of the thing. And this is an absolute value. So we're just going to say we're going to cut 3 quarters of an inch deep. Now we get into the fancy stuff that Akuma did a wonderful job of, of anticipating what we could possibly need. This is a reset recess depth. So if you are checking up against a sharp corner on a part that's already finished, we may want to have the tool plunge in ever so slightly and create a relief in the bottom of the jaw so that uh, the part does nestle all the way up against our mounting surface. Now, word to the wise, <laughs> don't populate this value if you're using a CNMG 80 degree insert. <laughs> That's a little too much pressure. So it will want us to use a 55 or a 35 degree tool if we're going to try to make a recess like this. Otherwise, there's just too much tool pressure, makes a lot of noise. In our case, we're going to leave it at zero. We don't really need to worry about it for this particular part. Then we have a taper value. This is awesome too. If you know your jaws have a little spring to them and you want to maintain contact on the high point of the jaws, we can program in a taper. And you notice that it's describing the taper as a greater value than our CX to the maximum we want. So in our case, let's just give it 15 thousandths worth of taper just so that, you know, that's a little extreme, but I just wanted you to be able to see how it works. And uh, so now if the jaws do flex out, as jaws tend to do, we will still main con maintain contact throughout the entire length of the part. Once we're done and we're confident that uh, we're ready to rock, I'll push F1 prepare start and the machine will pop up a warning for us. Did we already set the origin for the soft jaw process? If we say no here, it's going to dump us out of the process because, hey, it wants us to set the... Uh, set the zero point for the jaws before we engage in this system. In our case, we've already done it, so I'll click on the word yes. So now we have our soft jaw process, and it looks a little different than uh, what you're normally used to seeing if you're programming in G code. This will look familiar to you if you've been using the advanced one touch programming software, but let's explain it. There's our process on the left side, and it did create a G code program on the right. We can scroll through this G-code program, but it will not let us edit it. The Softjaw process sent the program directly to the OSP control without saving a copy in Windows. So if we decide we needed to make a change in one of these to one of these values, we'd have to come over, redo our Softjaw process over here. However, uh, now we've got a picture of our jaws that was drawn for us and when I click on cycle start we'll see our tool start to come in and make the soft jaw that as we specified. I'm going to click on the graphic window here so that my soft keys will correspond to the graphics themselves and what I would like to do here is while it's running, I'm going to turn on the section control so that we see a cutaway as this thing is, is uh, running through its process. The roughing cycle is exactly like you've always seen with a G85. I'm going to turn off the tool path, the trace, so that we can just see the tool without the little lines that are going through as I'm describing this. So it's doing a G85 as we're used to seeing with all of the other programming that we've done if you're using the Akuma Lathe automatic programming cycles. But when we get to the finish, you're going to see something really neat. Now keep in mind while you're doing this, your main machine controls do still work. You can turn on single block if you want and feed rate overrides, spindle overrides, all of that happy stuff. So as soon as we start to get close to this uh, three and a half inch diameter that we're working towards, I'm going to turn on single block so that we can talk as the tool is making its cut. It does something really neat that creates a nice finish for these uh, uh, for these jaws. So now I turned on my single block, and I'm going to 
run through the final cut of the process. Now you notice we're up above the 3.5 diameter that we specified, but that's because it will automatically put a chamfer in the top, and that chamfer size is based on those parameters that we set on the, remember the lower half of those parameters that I said we'd address later. Now it's going to come in and create a light chamfer as was specified by that, uh, that process. So now it makes the final cut. Notice it's making the taper just as we commanded it to do. This is the final roughing pass. Once it gets to the bottom, we'll get a retract. And now it's come back out. We're ready to do the finishing pass. There's a, a an M1 in there so that we could use our op optional stop before we see this. But what I wanted to show you is that once it starts in on the, the finishing process, notice what it did. It went all the way to the bottom first, and it is going to finish the, the, the bottom face of the jaws, which in essence is our primary Z datum, and it is going to finish it in the X plus direction. Oh, that's awesome. It gives us a much better surface finish and the ability to take more off than we could if we were dragging against the five degree lead angle of the insert. Now that it's done that, if we had commanded a relief, which obviously we don't want to do with this boring bar, it would continue on and create that relief. But since we didn't command it, it's just going to retract, pull out of the hole, create our chamfer, and finish the wall. I'm going to turn off single block now so that then we can see the uh, the entire finish of the process. Tool retracts, goes home, and we're done. How slick is that? Now that we've populated all of these values, once I come down and I uh, uh, measure my jaws, I decide what I want. If I were to quit out of the soft jaw process, all of these values will automatically be uploaded into the data model. There it is, all of the things that I cut. However, I would like to show you that uh, if I were to measure this and decide that, ooh, I need to take a little more off, or maybe I have too much angle, not enough angle, whatever it is, I can simply deselect the roughing process and do my prepare start once again. Confirm that I set the origin for the soft jaws. Oh, be careful. Process is just finished. Yep, good to go. Now I'm going to hit cycle start and you'll see the thing simply redo the finishing process. This is awfully slick and once you know how to use it, it becomes a uh, serious tool for just busting out a quick jaw. ID process is just as simple However, we're using a turning tool instead of a boring bar and our values are inverted, but the, uh, the basic theory behind it is exactly the same. If you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to your local Gossiker application staff and we'll be happy to help you out in any way that we can. Thanks for watching.